Jerry. The traveling kilt from Nova Scotia is amazing. Today, we are going to take a look at the northern part of Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island. An island located up on the northeast coast of the Atlantic Ocean. If you're curious about the name Breton, is derived from the Brittany region in France. Now I said it was an island, but it is artificially connected to the mainland of Nova Scotia by the world's deepest causeway, the Canso Causeway, which is unique. Another factor that makes the island unique is one of the world's largest saltwater lakes, the Bador, dominates the center of the island. As in Newfoundland, if you had visited Cape Breton Island 10,000 years ago, you would have likely found the Paleo Indians, who were the ancestors of the Mi'kmaq. These were the people that inhabited the island when the European Giovanni Cabato visited the region in 1497. Historians cannot confirm whether Cabot first visited Newfoundland or Cape Breton Island, but still, the Cape Bretoners decided to commemorate him by naming a beautiful scenic drive, the Cabot Trail, and a provincial park located near the village of Dingwall, the Cabot's Landing Historical Site and Provincial Park, after him. A few years after Cabot left, in 1521, a fishing colony was established by the Portuguese on the island's northeastern peninsula. It is recorded that those fishermen stayed there until as late as 1570. In the 1600s, under the French, the island was known as Ile Royale, and remained so until 1659 when those settlers left. It remained vacant for more than 50 years until the French decided they wanted to improve their defenses at the entrance of the Gulf of St. Lawrence and defend France's fishing fleet on the Grand Banks. They did this with the establishment of Louisbourg in 1713. Louisbourg, or Louisbourg as it's also affectionately known, was captured twice by the New Englanders with British naval assistance in 1745 and then again in 1758 and officially ceded to Britain in 1763. Britain merged the island to its adjacent colony of Nova Scotia, the mainland, and New Brunswick. Some of the first settlers to the island, following the Seven Year War, were Irish, and upon arriving they quickly merged with the local French communities to form a culture rich in both music and tradition. You can still find this in parts of Cape Breton today. The first permanently settled Scottish community on Cape Breton Island was Judic, on the west coast, in 1775. In 1784 Cape Breton became an independent British colony, and soon after the island began to thrive. Large-scale shipbuilding began in the late 1700s, beginning with schooners for local trade, moving into the 1820s where larger brigs and brigantines were built, mostly for British ship owners, and this peaked in the 1850s. In 1820 the colony of Cape Breton merged for the second time with Nova Scotia, which led to a large-scale development in the Sydney coal field and to an expanded fishery. During the first half of the 19th century, Cape Breton Island experienced an influx of Highland Scots numbering approximately 50,000 as a result of the Highland clearances in Scotland by the English. Today, descendants of the Highland Scots dominate Cape Breton Island's culture, particularly in the rural communities. To this day, Gaelic still can be heard on Cape Breton Island, and was the first language for a number of Cape Bretoners. My mother, for example, she was born in the community of Iona and did not speak English until the age of seven. Even today, when she speaks with her siblings, it is still not uncommon to hear smatterings of Gaelic in their conversation. In the late 19th and early 20th century, Cape Breton Island was home to two very famous inventors, Alexander Graham Bell and Guglielmo Marconi. Bell acquired land near the community of Bedeck in 1885 largely due to the surroundings, which reminded him of his early years in Scotland. He established a summer estate, complete with research laboratories, where he worked with the deaf and he continued to invent. Marconi's pioneering work in Cape Breton marked the beginning of modern radio technology. Marconi's station, the Marconi Towers, just outside the community of Glace Bay, became the chief communication center for the Royal Canadian Navy during the First World War through to the early years of the Second World War. Today, when visiting Cape Breton Island, you will find a very strong Scottish influence, as well as French. These would be Acadians, many of whom are descendants of those displaced in 1755. You will also find the influences of the peoples of the Mi'kmaq nation. 
Cape Breton is famous for its music traditions, making Cayleys a popular attraction for locals and summer visitors alike. For those of you who are not quite sure what a Cayley is, think of it as a large kitchen party with all your old friends, and new friends you have not met yet. Musical talent on the island is very common. Many of its favorite sons and daughters have received significant recognition outside of Cape Breton, including Rita McNeil, Natalie McMaster, Bruce Gathrow, the Rankin family, the Barry McNeils, and the Men of the Deeps. This is a male choral group of former miners from the industrial Cape Breton area. And by sharing these names, I'm just scratching the surface of the talent in Cape Breton. In 2009, Travel and Leisure Magazine's World Best Awards named Cape Breton number three in its top islands in the world rankings and the number one island to visit in North America. Now for years I have been asked what to do when visiting Cape Breton Island. Well the first thing you have to do is relax. Relax so you are able to soak in your surroundings. Tour the famous Cabot Trail and the Cape Breton Highlands National Park. While on your tour you can visit both Acadian and Scottish influenced communities. Explore the highlands and witness spectacular ocean views. See moose and bald eagles in their natural habitat, and even whales along the Gulf of St. Lawrence. You can cruise the Bedore Lakes, visit the world-class historical reconstruction of Fortress Lewisburg, and even descend into a coal mine beneath the ocean floor at the Glace Bay Miners Museum. Attend a Cayley as local bagpipers and fiddlers celebrate the Gaelic culture. I've been asked what is the best way to enjoy Cape Breton Island. Well, I would suggest spending a few days there. If you have any comments or questions about Cape Breton, let us know. You can do this by joining us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash NS is amazing, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Nova Scotia is amazing, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash Nova Scotia is amazing. Also, make sure to visit us at NovaScotiaIsAmazing.com and sign up for the list of 21 amazing things to do in Nova Scotia, as well as other tips, ideas, and special offers that we will be sharing. And oh yes, subscribe to this YouTube channel. In the next video, we are going to cross the causeway and take a look at the northern part of mainland Nova Scotia. Until then, have a fun day.